sending him, who is my very heart, back to you, I would have liked to keep him with me so that he could take your place in helping me while I am in chains for the gospel. But I did not want to do anything without your consent so that any favor you do will be spontaneous and not forced. We're in the book of Philemon, the last of Paul's letters in the New Testament. Now, the shortest, as I understand that Paul's letters are written from longest to shortest. And that passage right there I chose to open up with because I'm seeing um, a form of leadership and patience, um, not through force um, or being direct, but being indirect and leading and letting others make the choice on their own and take ownership on their own good lesson there and that that part that was uh probably only what one two one or two chapters um just one chapter so that would be verse 12 uh through 14 um but and that is in paul's plea for onesimus and who is the who this letter is more about um seems paul and timothy are writing mainly Paul, too, writing to Philemon, and it's uh, about Onesimus. Um, in verse 8, going backwards a little bit, it says, Therefore, in the same lesson um, about patience and leadership, ownership, letting others take ownership. So it says, Therefore, although in Christ I could be bold and order you to do what you ought to do, yet I appeal to you on the basis of love. And the love there is a powerful word, and it gives some meaning, even in that short excerpt, as to what the word love is. Patience, letting others make the decisions for themselves through leadership, not manipulation, not trying to manipulate people to do other things according to your will for whatever intent. Even for good intent, it's not to manipulate it is to lead. So I like that. I'm catching that here from this section. And then it continues. I then, as Paul, an old man, and now also a prisoner of Christ Jesus, I appeal to you for my son Onesimus, who became my son while I was in chains. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he has become useful both to you and to me. Um, and referring to being a prisoner of Christ Jesus. And I think that that means... We're saying it in more of a positive light. Um, it's an interesting choice of words there, and but I, I'm getting what the meaning is behind that. As far as a follower, a representative, an ambassador, um, or just belonging to Christ, belonging to God. Um, and again, continuing on with the you know topic of slavery, which. You know, catches my interest a lot because I don't have a lot of understanding for it so it didn't stands out to me as a flag to you know keep searching for understanding there keep searching for resolution um, and that is mentioned um, right here at the end somewhere okay let's continue uh, jump back to verse 15 after where we started. Perhaps the reason he was separated from you, which is Onesimus, perhaps the reason he was separated from you for a little while was that you might have him back for good. And that's a good lesson there as well. You know, sometimes things need to be learned. Um, sometimes there is a contraction um, phase that is needed for a greater expansion to come. I've heard those terms used before, and um, that makes good sense there. Verse 16, no longer as a slave, but better than a slave, as a dear brother. He is very dear to me, but even dearer to you, both as a man and as a brother in the Lord. So again, I mentioned slave, and it says, but 
no longer a slave. So was Onesimus a slave before? It seems so. I mean, it seems there's enough sentence there to make so. Um, but better than a slave as a dear brother. And so, I mean, it's just, you know, I, I, I can't completely focus on it too much, as, but it is important. Um, and it's, and it, there's, there's um, continuing importance in continuing to read the book. And we're going to refill the whole rest of the book, go back to the Old Testament. Again, this is the, I haven't mentioned it in a few videos, but New International Version, NIV. Um, it was a Bible I, I got when I was a kid. Not 100% sure where I got it from. One of the churches that, you know, I would go to. I never went too regularly. Sometimes regularly for a little while, but never lasted too long. Um, you know, my grandfather's also a, a preacher. Um who I love and respect very much, and this possibly could have come from him, I'm not sure. Um, but let's stay on topic here. So as far as that, um, no longer a slave, but better than a slave is it your brother. So, and, and I'm picking up in this sense as a slave is someone who, who maybe is on a lower end of personal development and needs to work through personal development. But I'm not making sense of the slavery though, so... Um, those are my thoughts as I read through it. Um, I don't know how much resolution, I, I can't come to much here, but thinking, you know, just thinking through it. Um, and so it's just a short letter. And it finishes in verse uh, 23. Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, sends you greetings, and so do Mark, Aristarchus, Demas and Luke, my fellow workers, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. So, and again, this is some, someone who used to be called Saul, came from a dark place, you know, according to this story. And look how he talks now. Look at the spirit, you know, apparently speaking through him in these letters. And that's, that's what this is all about, is, is God's message being conveyed through these scriptures through the Gospels, through the Acts, through the letters. And then I forget, um, and I really appreciate Bible Project uh, YouTube channel. So there's a playlist on the New Testament. There's an overview video of the whole New Testament, which was really cool. It was, it was also like really convincing to me um, to see that. Um, really beautifully written, organized. And so it goes through. Now it's helping me understand these sections. So the Gospels. Um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, um, and then Acts, <clears throat> and that goes through, well, there's Acts, and then we get into um, Paul's letters, is how this is split up, and then I forget what this section is that before we get to Revelation, or is it Revelations, let me see, Revelation, um, of what this section of the book is that's coming up. Hebrews. Um, let's see. Which is um, probably the last longest book. Hebrews and Revelation. Save my place here. Just got an old, you know what helps with me? Just little strips of paper. Wow, this is a piece of like a an envelope I just tore up and it's, who knows how old it is. So, and I pass them from book to book. This one's probably going to stay in this Bible forever. Um, let's see. So Hebrews, uh, we go back to like a 12 th or 13 chapter book. Um, so this is a, a section, an ending section. Hebrews, James, first and second Peter. Then we have first, second, and third John. All those are all very short. And then Jude, and then Revelation. So I'm going to watch that again. I'll probably bring it up on the next video as to what that section is because I, I just I love being able to mentally organize that. Learning from those with experience who are preaching from a place of authority and like I see the Bible Project channel. So uh, things are things I, I really just uh, probably will never forget is helping to mentally compartmentalize, organize the sections of the Bible. And what Bible Project does on their channel is organizes each of these books and when they explain what the book is all about. So I really appreciate that. I'm going to link 
I'll probably take the time to link their videos at the end uh, um, in the comment section of every single one of these reviews. Uh, I just I find it that helpful. Um, and you know maybe eventually I'll even you know pick out lessons that are from my grandfather that are I think they're being organized on YouTube. He just had his last day preaching at his church finally. Um, he's just getting to retirement age. I think he's traveling to Africa soon. I'm not sure about that. Heard, heard some some word about that. He's been all over the world helping raise money for churches and build churches and schools, um, which is pretty cool. He's got an amazing life, amazing story. I really appreciate him. He's a great person to learn from. Um, but he's got great lessons. He's a funny man. Um, he's very wise, loving, helpful. He's a leader. Um, and he's still around. So maybe I'll link some of those videos if I find them that can I can work on relating them into these books. So this is going to be an important part of my channel and its own playlist. You can find these videos in their own playlist for the New Testament. And my playlist section. Um, and, you know, I can spread... Um, the good word that comes from my grandfather that helps. Like I said, I'm not a practicing Christian. I'm reading this to get some understanding. It helps to actually go to the source and read it rather than just talk about it um, and follow everything else that we hear out there in the world. Re take the time ourselves to read it through and through. Okay, so um, Hebrews is up next. We'll see you guys on the next one. Hope you're having a great day.